This is 7 National News. In our top story, the UAE has announced an additional 60 million US dollars to support the humanitarian situation in Syria. The country has already pledged to provide 300 million US dollars, with the total contribution now standing at 360 million dollars. His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Presidential Affairs, who was heading the UAE delegation, announced this while addressing the second international donors conference to support the Syrian people in Kuwait, according to the Emirates news agency WAM. In his speech, His Highness Sheikh Mansour stated that Syrians have secured a special place in the hearts of those in the UAE, and the country today is hosting more than 200,000 Syrian people who are working and living in the state. He added that the UAE have made efforts to support the Syrian people in all aspects and were able to create the Syrian Recovery Trust Fund with the help of partners in Germany, the United States and a number of other donor countries to help with the financing of projects to rebuild basic infrastructure in Syria. The UAE delegation to the conference included Sheikh Lubna al Qasimi, Minister of Development and International Cooperation, Dr. Anwar Gargash, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Obaid Humaid al Tayyar, Minister of State for Financial Affairs, and Reem al Hashimi, the Minister of State. The Federal National Council is to hold its sixth ordinary session of the 15th legislative chapter on the 21st of January. According to a report from Emirates news agency WAM, Mohammed Ahmed Al Moor, the Speaker of the FNC, will chair the session which will be held at the FNC's headquarters in Abu Dhabi. On the agenda for the sixth session will be further discussions of the federal draft law on children's rights. Industry professionals from around the world will convene in Abu Dhabi for the 7th World Future Energy Summit, which is set to begin next week. Hosted by Mazda from the 20th until the 22nd of January, the summit is set to focus on the latest challenges and solutions in renewable energy, clean technology and sustainability. In an official statement, Naji Haddad, show director for the summit, said the conference program will engage political, business, finance, academic and industry leaders to drive innovation innovation, business and investment opportunities in response to the growing need for sustainable energy. Approximately 125 experts are expected to deliver thought-provoking speeches on topics such as waste to energy covered for the first time at the summit, the role of natural gas, energy efficiency, the need to better utilize readily available technologies and the changing dynamics of consumer behavior. The Roads and Transport Authority will start test runs of the Dubai tram service within the next two weeks, according to local reports. RTA has stated that the first zone test run will start from January 26, but will not be open to passengers. The second test run will start from April 16th and the third from June 14th. The authority said two tram stations will be connecting with Dubai Metro. Jumeirah Lake Towers and Dubai Marina Metro stations will be linked to Dubai Tram in the third zone starting June 14th. The tram network comprises 17 passenger stations, 11 of which are covered under Phase 1. The fleet is comprised of 11 trams in the initial phase and 14 trams will be added in Phase 2. The tram is expected to service about 27,000 riders per day at the start of operations in November, with ridership expected to hit 66,000 per day by 2020. The Sharjah Civil Defence Department have revealed that less than half of companies who make fire safety equipment have renewed their licences and have issued warnings to building owners requesting that they not deal with unlicensed companies as doing so may put lives at risk. According to local reports, Sharjah Civil Defence has cooperated with the Sharjah Economic Development Department and will impose penalties on errant companies. Brigadier Abdullah al Suwedi, the Director General of the Sharjah Civil Defence Department, was quoted as saying that 200 companies were authorised to produce fire safety equipment in Sharjah in 2012, and in 2013 only 80 had renewed their licences. According to the department, a fine will first be imposed, and if it does not amend its status, the company will be shut down. Brigadier al Suwedi urged owners to ask companies for their trade licence and report unlicensed companies, adding that the department wanted to rid the market of people who cheat property owners and offer cheap rates for maintenance work. 
Brigadier Al Suedi said that all maintenance contracts should be approved by the Civil Defence Department, which is intensifying its inspections to ensure businesses follow the rules. There were 500 fires reported in Sharjah in 2013, a sharp decrease compared with 800 in 2012. And in other news, Emirates Airline unveiled Brazilian football legend Pelé as a global ambassador today in Dubai. The announcement, which comes just five months before this summer's FIFA World Cup in Brazil, marks the second time the carrier has partnered with a footballing legend in the run-up to a major tournament. Fresh from Zurich, where he was honoured by FIFA for his lifetime achievements on Monday, Pelé is the only man to have won three FIFA World Cups. At today's press conference, the football legend fielded questions from local media on his hopes for his country in the forthcoming campaign, as well as his tips for the countries he feels will be challenging for the world's most prestigious football title. Pelé was first visited in the UAE in 1973, when another of his former sides, Santos, played against Dubai club Al Nasser. To talk about the cup, I think we have to respect that. any team because uh, we have a traditional team who used to be you now prepared for the World Cup. I think Brazil is going to be okay to be there. And in my, <clears throat> my opinion, today, six months before the World Cup, five months before the World Cup, I think uh, the best team who I saw, because I followed this last two years, I think we have a spine, no doubt organized team and Germany. Germany is the other team who don't play very well. 